Hi everyone, Frank Game here, and today I'm going to show you how to remove all of the carbon from sugar without actually burning the carbon to convert it to carbon dioxide. So I got this, um, so I got this chunk of carbon from just a few grams of sugar earlier by reacting it with concentrated sulfuric acid. So here's about 100 grams of sugar. Here's about 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. So let me get my notes. Okay, so what happens here is um, sucrose, when or table sugar, when mixed with concentrated sulfuric acid, loses its hydrogen and oxygen as water to the sulfuric acid, and the solid carbon is left behind. Twelve atoms of carbon are produced by each molecule of um, sucrose. So it's going to... So the products are going to sort of push themselves out of the beaker as a black uh, carbon snake formation. Um, and the reason sulfuric acid can do this is sulfuric acid, when, when dissolving in water, is very exothermic. Sulfuric acid really wants to just take the water from everything. It produces 95.3 ki kilojoules per mole, which that's, that's quite a bit of heat. So you're going to need about a milliliter of concentrated sulfuric acid per gram of sucrose. So 100 grams of sucrose, 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. Now in a side reaction, poisonous sulfur dioxide will be produced and not only is it toxic, it stinks. Sulfur compounds just, they just stink. There's, that, that's, that, that's all I can say. Pungent, rotten egg, acidic smell. It gets into your clothes, so so rather than wear a mask and do this inside, I'm going to take it outside and stand a bit of a distance from the reaction. Okay, so here's our beaker full of sucrose right here. Now that we're outside and I'm not going to get nasty smelling sulfur compounds in my clothes, I'm going to add the sulfuric acid, stand back, and watch. Alright, so the sulfuric acid will take a moment to begin dehydrating the sugar. Now once you see the black carbon start to form, that's when um, the sulfur dioxide is starting to be produced and you'll want to stand back. Alright, now as you can see, some of the carbon is starting to form, and as the reaction heats up, it will speed up. So now you see the reaction is beginning to bubble vigorously. This is water vapor and a very small amount of sulfur and carbon dioxide. 
Again, the black solid you see there is carbon. So I'm beginning to see a little bit of the uh, carbon start to push itself out of the beaker. Again, you're going to have to be patient to actually start to see the uh, carbon snake form. Alright, it's about 0 degrees Celsius outside and the reaction requires a bit of heat to get started, so maybe it's just too cold out right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of heat with a propane torch, just a little bit, get it going. Alright, let's heat this up a little. start the bubble a bit more vigorously. If you do this in a room temperature environment, it'll be a lot easier to get this going. There we go. Now, now we're starting to see the carbon push itself out of the beaker. You're going to want to avoid those fumes, as I stated earlier, sulfur dioxide is quite poisonous and it stinks. The only way I can describe the smell is a combination between a strong acid, real pungent, and rotten eggs. That's what it smells like. Heat a little bit more. Keep dehydrating that sugar. Alright, it's fuming now. Let me get away from those fumes.
All right, so I believe we've um, removed all the carbon now. So as you can see, it's made the, made a bit of a bit of a carbon tube here. So once it's finished fuming, I'm gonna take it inside and remove all the acid. All right, here's the product. All this carbon came from about only a hundred grams of. Sugar. All right, so here's our final product after neutralizing the acid with. Um, sodium bicarbonate solution. So all this carbon came from only uh, 100 grams of sugar. Because you're, you're producing 12 carbon atoms from each molecule of, of sugar. So you're gonna make a lot of carbon from just a little bit of sugar. This is the same stuff you'll find in um, charcoal briquets you buy for your grill. It's just elemental carbon and is burned to produce carbon dioxide gas. You can burn this if you really want to but if you are going to do so, please do it outside because there are going to be a bit of residual sulfur compounds in there from the sulfuric acid we used. And as I said before, sulfur compounds stink. Either like rotten eggs or pungent and irritating. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.